I set up boards and then we just paint. But what I did was I, bought, I invited the kids and I invited the OGs that were still alive to kind of share in knowledge. So that way the OGs can say, hey boy, how you guys do you guys stuff now? And when they, when they share their knowledge, then the OGs be like, hey, you know, this is how we used to do it. We used to do it like this and we used to hit up this place and that place. But what the kids had to keep in mind is this was the 80s. There was no programs. We wasn't standing around and sitting around like this and talking about this. You know, you bought this up, your parents found out you got licking. Although today, the movement is a little bit different. It's still the same, if that makes any sense. Yeah, because for us guys, we grew up in that generation. I call it the gap generation, where my grandparents grew up Hawaiian, spoke Hawaiian. Yeah, then they, they had my dad, and my dad was supposed to go to school and learn English. Yeah, and then really live the, the American dream. So by the time I was born, it was all English. Never had any traces of my grandparents speaking Hawaiian because they passed away before I came along. So there was this dis disconnection, yeah. And then now you see this resurgence of Olelo Hawaii, you know, coming with the immersion schools, everybody, all these kids at your age starting to speak again. But we still stuck in that generation. We cannot, you know, we, we're trying, but it's fortunate and yet unfortunate, yeah, because hip hop became the replacement for that gap. Yeah, it was our way of of protesting, of being becoming activists for whatever culture it was. And the culture was so similar to our own culture that we felt like we belonged. So by tagging, by hitting up buildings that we felt never belonged to the land, that was our activism. That was a way of saying, hey, I all live with this place. Said I moved up to San Francisco from here, from college. Uh, when I got, first got into writing, it was in the canals, the drainage canals, uh, painting under the road and stuff. I didn't know that I stopped until I went to San Francisco and saw how good they were. No, my first time painting was on the project rooftops. And these are some famous guys in San Francisco. Back then, never have digital camera or cell phone, so when you took a picture, you have to use film. And uh, them guys never take picture of my piece because they don't want to waste the film. I was like, oh, suck. That's my wake up call. I want it to be as good as these guys. So that lit a fire under me that has continued to this day. Um, but now, instead of trying to be as good as somebody else, it's always about inspiration comes from inside, yeah. So in graffiti, a big thing was like we have crews. You know, groups of people to come together and do the similar things and some of them become rivals so this crew like beef this crew and they battle on the walls instead of fighting uh, and for me that that competition fueled me to get better but eventually you got to grow up and realize you got to look inside when you're in the hour you got to find that inspiration and pull it out from yourself uh, this one is queen lily okalani this face is Honolulu community college on Oahu. the wall is huge i was like 22 feet tall or something, a couple yeah. hundred feet long. It took us a month to paint, in the summer no less. So me and him painted together on this one. Uh, with, I think it was about 20 artists that painted. Came different days, and people come after work on weekends. And G was one of them. And G came from the Big Island Crush, he came yeah. and painted with us. We're gonna be talking about Crush later. Don't worry if it looks good, just have fun. Okay, he's not making a masterpiece and trying to sell it for a million dollars. Oh, cool. oh, yeah, the name that you came up with, that's the one we're gonna do. So I just want it as the big letters. Okay, you gotta draw ink.
you have only one boss is the music. Right? There is no flat music, there is up and down music, right? Which is the groove. This groove is defined in many different styles of dancing. The rock, the bounce, you know, in the house you have the jacking, right? But it's still a groove, right? We just simplify and we call a groove. And this groove is gonna be from the top to the bottom. Groove, groove. Right? Do you breathe? Somebody asked me that like two years ago. Do you breathe when you break? And I was like, wow, that's a good question. Because we're so much in the moment, sometimes we don't think about things like that. But to understand how oxygen is so important to actually be able to be spontaneous and continue with explosive energy, you have to be feeding your body yes. with oxygen. So, so what he's saying is that's pretty interesting what you're breaking down. Because it is a harmony in its own right. And when it's a complete harmony, as what you're explaining, is when you can be able to relax and breathe and also be right there. Yeah. And, and make it look easy. Exactly. What, what it is is that you don't want to show anybody in your face that you're struggling. Exactly. You want to make it look like it's easy. That's the foundation. That's that's why when I saw the chair freeze and everybody threw it, and I tried, I couldn't do it, I almost killed myself because they made it look so easy. They made it look like anybody can do it. Yes. But the key to doing a good chair freeze is to make it look easy. So what he's doing, he's explaining to you in depth the science of what he's doing. But when he says full speed, can't tell what's going on. You, you know that he's in control. Yes, control here, control here. Okay, so everything's gonna be alright. Thank you. 
Can I even press the button? <laughs> <I know. laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Do the outline on top of this. <laughs> cool, man. <laughs> Difference of how you get the clean lines, right? Yeah. And some blurry line. Yeah. So I'm missing out on this. Look at this. I'm gonna see how far back I'm going to do that. Just shade it real quick like that. From there, I can use the white to go back on top of the black. So you can make dots. That's how you guys get the line, the line so clean, huh? Yeah? No, we got skills. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right, huh? <laughs> no? Before all these names, it was just dancing, you know? It was the dance they did to the music that was playing, you know? It's like, whatever, whatever is playing, oh, you're playing that kind of funky thing? I'm gonna get funky, you know? I'm gonna get funky, you know? Oh, you're playing more like a disco sound? Okay, I'm gonna get like this, get a little bit looser and more playful with it. And you're playing house, then I'm feeling like, oh, some soul folk in here, you know? Solo yeah, solo music. Solo music. See you guys, he said solo music. So when we started, we had a cypher that made you guys face outward and have you dance by yourself. Sasha. Yeah. Sasha over here is amazing. I feel like a live in the beach. <laughs> you see that? I'm on the beach. I'm you see that? <laughs> He's coming over. You see that? I'm part of it. Yeah. That's what we're talking about, you know? So that's what we're trying to get today, you know? We, we want to understand that vibe and that movement. And, you know, we're going to get some techniques in there, you know? Because that's where it is. Someone, to me. And you start doing this. 
then you're not dancing with anyone. Okay? Engage. You know, oh, I feel weird. What the hell is that? You're engaged. So he's gonna do that. That's what he's gonna do. Just let it be, you know? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Tell all them daughter, I is great, they brought the bonds with lost strength in them structure. Babylon, your system could never prosper. Welcome to Kona, where we love the band, the sticky and low. When it's blazing out your window, see, I get my pass by. Don't wanna know why my eyes so red because I'm so high, so high. But Babylon, them crazy.